because that will help them do two things. It'll help them pay off the debt that they're gonna to have to take out to complete the acquisition. And then ultimately it's going to help increase their sustainability as a business as the cybersecurity market continues to consolidate around them. Welcome back everyone to Chipstock Investor. Today we're gonna to be focusing on a part of the cybersecurity industry that we have not spent a ton of time on yet. We're gonna focus on identity access management. Before we jump in to this episode, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That helps us out a lot. It's a free and easy way to support us here at Chipstock Investor. And if you're interested in a membership, make sure you check out our Semiconductor Insider membership for $5 a month. It's a great value, much cheaper than a pair of Lululemon leggings. Yeah, a lot cheaper. A lot cheaper than a pair of Lululemon leggings. But not as comfortable. Not as comfortable. Our membership's probably not going to help you look as good either. Probably not. But it will help you get into financial shape. We use that with on running. I'm running out of things to say about this. So just check out the membership. Okay. Let's talk about identity access management. And first we'll take a look at our cybersecurity industry flowchart that we created for our cybersecurity industry video and manual link in the description and here on the video. We have been focusing mostly on the left side of the chart. Now we're gonna focus more on that right side of the chart where it's primarily software based. And that's where identity and access management falls into the cybersecurity industry. Microsoft is the absolute giant in this space. They have the vast majority of market share when it comes to this part of the industry. But we're going to talk about a couple of other companies here, Okta and CyberArk, which are both more of a pure play, we could say, in this part of the cybersecurity industry. Yeah, and especially we want to talk about CyberArk which is the second largest pure play behind Okta in terms of revenue. Okta, well over $2 billion in annual revenue. CyberArk making a push towards $1 billion. And they've struck an interesting deal with Toma Bravo, which I feel like might be up there with NVIDIA as the most mentioned business name on our channel the last couple of months. They have been wheeling and dealing in the software market, especially in cybersecurity. And they acquired a number of identity and access management companies just in the last couple of years, SailPoint, Ping Identity, and ForgeRock. And of course, like we often share, one of the reasons for this is because there's plenty of growth in cybersecurity. So many businesses, as they implement new information technologies into their operations, are not paying enough attention to cybersecurity. And so we keep getting these reports of data breaches and you get a big enough data breach it is very costly. It can completely shut down your operation. And so identity and access management, a very fast growing segment of cybersecurity. Of course, it's going to attract private equity companies like Toma Bravo, but that's not the only reason a company like Toma Bravo is interested. There are a lot of players in the software side of the cybersecurity industry. And so consolidation is needed, especially because a lot of these smaller players are financially broken. Okta is kind of one of those businesses where they've made some missteps. Of course, the stock price is not completely their fault. During the pandemic, we had this massive surge in stock price and then the ensuing collapse, but there've been multiple data breaches the last couple of years. There was one in January, 2022, and then another one late in 2023. That's not a great look if you're a cybersecurity company and your systems are getting breached, even if it's through a subcontractor and maybe not completely your fault, leave some question marks in the minds of potential customers looking to implement your product to keep yourself secure. You might be left wondering, is Okta really the best fit? The company also has not been able to get its employee stock-based compensation under control. And so we have to come back to, I think, we believe, CyberArk, which has actually been the better performing stock over the last seven years. And if you go back even further before 2017, which is when Okta had its IPO, if you go all the way back to 2014, CyberArk actually up 
well over 700% since their own IPO a decade ago. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. So we're going to focus on these two portions, identity access management and a subset of that privileged access management or PAM. Maybe wondering what the difference between IAM and PAM are. And Delinea describes it well in this blog post. Identity access management is a system to identify and authorize users across an organization. And that PAM or privileged access management is a subset of IAM that focuses on privileged accounts and systems. It governs and controls access to accounts with elevated privileges, such as administrator accounts, and strictly controls their use in accessing highly sensitive systems and data. Thank you, Richard, for that wonderful explanation. And so when we're talking about this part of the market, it's a type of software that adds a much, much needed extra layer of security over and above a password. So you may actually be very familiar with things like Okta and like CyberArk. It's a similar solution to two-factor authentication. Maybe you, you type your password in and maybe you have the Google Authenticator app where you have to input a code from a second device. Okta works in much the same way, CyberArk much the same way. So it's a second layer over and above password. There's maybe a second device involved. And so this thus basically becomes a type of cloud software that helps verify that you are indeed who you say you are before you gain access to that critical system. It could be anything from email access, or it could be critical data that's housed in, in an app, in one of your organization's uh, applications. And there might be data in there that if the wrong person got hold of it, a company could exploit. Maybe they resell the data. Maybe they hold up ransom and ask for many millions of dollars in exchange for giving the data back. And so this identity access management is a way to make sure that those credentials like passwords are not getting exploited by the wrong people. Let's go back and talk about Toma Bravo. And just a few years ago, they announced an investment with Venify. And I'm 100% certain that the last time I had to say that company name, I said Venafi. I was trying to make it European. But we're talking about Venify. They made an investment in Venify, the leader in machine identity management. Fast forward to today, and CyberArk is actually acquiring that company, Venify, from Toma Bravo. We discussed this over on our Discord channel uh, a couple of weeks ago. Total purchase price, $1.54 billion. $540 million of it is actually going to be newly issued CyberArk shares. So Toma Bravo actually going to be a fairly sizable, probably about a 5% shareholder in CyberArk by the time this deal is all said and done. The other portion of it is going to be cash, about $1 billion in cash paid to Toma Bravo. So previously, CyberArk had a pretty good looking balance sheet, about $1 billion in cash and short-term investments. Those are the two blue bars on the left and a bit shy of $600 million in debt. That's probably going to get skewed towards debt after this deal is finalized. Obviously, CyberArk not going to use all of the cash on hand to fund the deal. They're probably going to use a bit of the cash and then take out some new debt to pay for the rest. This is a really interesting deal because you can see right here in the middle, the expectation for CyberArk for calendar year 2024 is just over 900 million in sales. Based on Venify's most recent financials, Venify, once added into the mix, uh, at least as of this report, Venify generated 150 million in annualized revenue. It's going to be a pretty sizable boost for CyberArk. And uh, the even more important thing to add here is they say Venify is actually profitable. So going again back here to the revenue free cash flow and net income or loss breakdown for CyberArk. This is actually going to be accretive to CyberArk's financial profile. Yes, they get the revenue bump, free cash flow, already positive, net income on a gap basis, they're nearing break even, 
this company actually could far exceed these expectations for 2024 and perhaps 2025, they're the next bar on the right looks even better based on these initial expectations from Wall Street once Venify gets added into the mix, owing to the fact that is a profitable asset that Toma Bravo has been keeping to itself up until this point. When you think of identity and access management, historically, we are only talking about people, you and me and a password and access to a company's systems. But with Venify, it offers a machine identity management or access management. Why would we need such a thing as a machine access management software? Here's maybe a bit of a cliche example, but robotics, industrial robotics, these things are hooked up to the cloud, or maybe they're hooked up to a company's internal network. And these machines, much like us as users, are accessing a company's data and critical information. So are these machines. They're being given access to something, to some level of information. And so thus, you now have a new attack vector for a cyber criminal where a machine identity can be exploited and unauthorized access to a company's data can now be stolen. So you also need a way to secure access for these machines. But it's not just things like robotics and physical pieces of equipment. There's a lot of other industries this touches as well. For example, healthcare is one that you're pretty familiar with, right, Casey? A lot of machines in hospitals contain a ton of patient data. When you think about medication access machines, glucose machines, thermometers even, vital sign machines, all of these can be and sometimes are connected to patient data. And then beyond physical equipment, there's a lot of software-based bots as well. Especially in like the financial industry, you might have a server somewhere that's connected to a company's internal network with all sorts of access to financial data and information. And that software bot collects data and automates tasks. Maybe it's running a trading algorithm based on a financial institution's information. So it's more than just physical equipment. Sometimes we hear estimates from these companies that secure not just humans, but also machines. Companies like Okta and Cyber are talking about hundreds of millions of identities that need to be secured for a large organization. That sounds like an inflated number, but it's actually not if you consider the fact that the machines out there, both hardware, physical machines, and software-based machines far outnumber the human users. You start to get an idea of how important this particular niche of the cybersecurity industry is. We'll go back to this slide for just a moment and take a look at all of the companies that are involved in just this one small space in the cybersecurity industry. You can see that there has been some consolidation that has been taking place and that is much needed, but still it is a very highly competitive part of the industry. Nick, I know that I have received personally a lot of recommendations on Okta in the past regarding investing. But really, after taking a look at this business, especially with some of the recent breaches that have happened with Okta, it makes, certainly makes me feel a little more cautious about that. We're not invested in either of these companies at this point, and we have no plans at all of investing certainly in Okta. But maybe you could just give us a little bit more color on CyberArk's valuation, because this is a much more interesting company to me. I, I agree. It is to me as well. It definitely isn't just the stock price performance either. Now, we don't know exactly where the numbers are going to fall, because as we record this on May 28th, we haven't gotten a Q2 earnings update from CyberArk yet. And we don't know what the ultimate numbers are going to be from Venify once CyberArk completes the purchase. But just based on where we're at right now, if, if we're thinking CyberArk does a little over 800 million in trailing 12 month revenue in Q2 plus 150 million from, from Venify on an enterprise value, the company trades for about 10 times enterprise value EV to trailing 12 month sales. That's a pretty middle of the road 
reasonable range for a growing software company. But the real question I think we want to focus in on, at least as far as we're concerned, is the profitability profile. We want to see how quickly CyberArk is able to ramp up free cash flow in particular in the coming quarters after acquiring Venify because that will help them do two things. It'll help them pay off the debt that they're going to have to take out to complete the acquisition. And then ultimately, it's going to help increase their sustainability as a business as the cybersecurity market continues to consolidate around them. So that's going to be really important in them creating a sustainable business, especially when you have industry giants like Microsoft. And then also CrowdStrike, which is the only software-based, purely software-based cybersecurity stock we own, uh, a company like uh, CrowdStrike with endpoint security, possibly getting ready to encroach on this identity and access management part of the market as well. So that's kind of what we're looking at at this point. How quickly can CyberArk ramp up its profit margins and get ready for more industry consolidation and ample amounts of competition from some very large, very successful companies? Certainly a company that we're going to keep an eye out. We have a thread going regarding CyberArk and other cybersecurity companies over on our Discord channel. If you're interested in that, check it out. Link is in the description below. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and have your notifications enabled so you don't miss a video. We will be back with much more later this week. Make sure you tune in here at Chipstock Investor.